So I was tying my shoes and thought to myself, who is the weakest monster in the Godzilla movies? With a span of over 30 films and more than half them involving big kaiju battles, you just have to wonder who the big G just didn't have a problem with. So in this video, we're going to find out who the weakest of the weak is. Now before I begin, I gotta lay down some ground rules. Number 1. The monsters have to be in a Godzilla movie, meaning no Gargantuas or Dogura or anyone like that. Stock footage isn't gonna cut it here. Number 2. We're not counting human sized monsters, otherwise a majority of this list would consist of babies. Number 3. If a monster has a transformation, we're only counting its final form. Number 4. We're only counting the films, meaning no comics, cartoons, or anything like that. You hear that, Godzuki? You've been spared. Now that we got that out of the way, let's make our list. And to see the monsters, we're gonna head right to my favorite site since my own infant years, Toho Kingdom. And right off the bat, I'm already seeing who's gonna go first. The giant octopus and giant condor. These things are simply overgrown animals that didn't do much of anything when battling their opponents. Though to give credit where it's due, the octopus was at least smart enough to get the hell out of there once it realized it had no chance to take on a giant ape more than half its size. I can't say the same for the bird. The condor's fight was so bad, it looked like it was irritating Godzilla more than actually harming him. It took only one blast from Godzilla's breath to take it out and give the fishies an early thanksgiving. This bird would be seen again in Godzilla's revenge as stock footage and... What? Wait, why? When did this become a thing? Giant Eagle? I've seen this movie dozens of times and the footage is the exact same. Granted, in both films, no one ever calls this thing by a name, but whatever. I mean, does it really matter that this thing has to be two different animals in two different movies? No, it doesn't. Just for the hell of it, I'll include it, since it's only going to be with these two anyway. Now that we got the obvious ones out of the way, let's really give some thought now. I decided to go with Ibira next. Now, he could have easily fit the category of our last batch of monsters, since he fits the theme of just an overgrown animal, but I felt as though since he had a name and didn't suck nearly as bad as the condor slash eagle, I just gave him his own spot. The sea monster is nothing much to write home about. He may have some decent volleyball skills and seems to hold his own while underwater, but in the end, he's still just a big lobster. When you put him side by side with super monsters like Space Godzilla or Biolante, he becomes a fragile toy that looks like he's about to break. Final Wars did him no favors either. When he had the balls to come out of the water and actually tear shit up, he gets his crustacean ass handed to him moments later by human-sized mutants. Hell, his fight with Godzilla wasn't even worth showing in the movie. Big G just pops out of the water and blasts his ass to Chef Ramsay, ready to butter him up. One final note I gotta give is his glaring weakness, the yellow liquid. Now, I don't remember exactly what this stuff was and how it kept Ibira away. All I know is that a piss-colored liquid that chews away a monster doesn't really make it all that threatening anymore. Two spots filled, three to go. This next one kind of hurt a little bit because I actually like this monster, that being Manda, the once face of sci-fi Japan himself. I know he's probably done some amazing feats in the comics, but as my rules state, we're only counting his film incarnations, and sadly, our guardian of Mu just hasn't done anything impressive. His film's debut in Atragon was such a pathetic introduction. He comes in swimming like a freestyle champion, only to get shocked a little bit and swim away as fast as he came. Though to be fair, the Gotengo is said to be the strongest weapon in the movie, so it was a valiant effort at least. Destroy All Monsters redeems him a little bit for eventually going head to head with the military in one scene, even if it was with Godzilla and a few others. I gotta minus a few points for the battle at Mount Fuji though. Yeah, he did show up for the fight, but as soon as Ghidorah hit the scene, he transformed into a background painting and just watched. Final Wars is the vicious he's ever been, coming close to actually destroying the Gotengo, if not for the convenience of them being by an undersea volcano. With no other special feats, he's sadly one of the weak ones here. As I was about to include the larval Mothra, I instantly remembered my own rules and another not-so-big bad bug, the Kamakuris. Now, I was actually hesitant to put this guy on the list, and I'll tell you why. But first, we gotta build up to it. Okay, so the Kamakuras first appeared in Son of Godzilla, where a trio of them found Godzilla's son, or adopted son, and attempted to eat him. 
Papa G comes in the nick of time and trashes them like how the Hulk did Loki in the Avengers. Afterwards, he uses a bit of breath and tells the sun to come around the campfire. Now this is important because this does show how these bugs are ignitable to Godzilla's breath. The remaining Mantis looked at his fallen brothers and then looked back to Godzilla, knowing its situation, it thought to itself, Fuck this. and flies out of there. Moments later in the movie, the bug comes back, but now fully trained. What do I mean by that? It can now stand Godzilla's atomic breath. Big G fires at him not once, but twice, and it just shrugs it off like nothing. Even scrapped footage of Manila shows him using his own atomic breath, and nothing happens. I have to say, it's on Ghidorah's level of resistance. Not many kaiju can withstand Godzilla's breath, and here a giant mantis of all things can. Sadly, it couldn't train itself to withstand a giant spider bite, and its fight with Godzilla, if you want to call it that, is undeniably the weakest battle of the whole movie. Big G just grabs him and throws him into an electrical tower in the end. A shame I was giving him such praise before. Okay, it's time to move on to our final spot. One of the weakest monsters, maybe the weakest, Okay, the Condor may have him beat out on that. That being Manila, or Minya, whatever you want to call him. Now, I know what some might be thinking. Fins, you said you weren't counting infant monsters, did you not? Well, no, I didn't say I wasn't counting them. I said I wasn't including monsters who were around human size. So why not include little Godzilla in this as well? To tell you the truth, I was thinking about tying them here, but Lil G doesn't really fit fight, if you want to call that one attempt to fight, I personally wouldn't since he didn't do anything. At least Manila wants blood on his hands. In fact, he's been in more fights than most kaiju have in the series and that kind of surprised me. But in those battles, he's either lost or needs the aid of Papa G or a little boy in shorts to help him win. His smoke rings do next to nothing and his own atomic breath works at times and turns off at others. Though I will admit, he is still young, and sometimes it looks like he's even strategizing in battle, which is impressive. But any monster in this world could easily have him as a little snack if they chose to fight him, even the ones on this list. Now, if you feel that's unfair, I understand. All these candidates really weren't in any particular order, so judge as you must. As for me, I'm gonna finish tying my shoes and say goodnight.